Let's talk about this movie we both went and saw today. Which I'm surprised I was able to get TJ to see this. It was a really weird texting conversation with TJ. He's like, like which one you want to see? And he's like, I don't know which one you want to see. Well, you got to fucking tell him the other option. <coughs> I was about to get because this and the Northman came out at the same time, you know. Yeah, so like we we had, we had options, which is so su- super rare. Yeah, it's like be weird because usually, dude. Honestly, I kind of want to see that fucking little cartoon that came out too. The fucking bad guys. I'll just wait for fucking that shit to come out because I don't feel like yeah, in a theater that's, that's, a bunch that's of like a kids and thing. shit. I'll wait. That's a v- but it honestly yeah. looks pretty fucking good too. It's like a little bit more original than most of the shit they make. Well, but, you um, have like Northman, which is like Viking Conan yeah. the Barbarian, you know, which is like that's looks cool. cool. That's, I almost, yeah. I mean, I was, I think they actually said that one's going to probably make the, more money, but uh, I don't know. I was like kind of fucking, I, I don't know. I was looking a little bit more forward to this one, so I kind of wanted to see it first, but uh, I wanted to see both. And like, we kept going back and forth where it'd be like, you were like, oh, let's, I'm, let's see, I'm going to go see uh, the fucking massive town. I'm like, well, maybe we should see the Northman. <laughs> Yeah. And then I went and talked to them. It's like, this guy wants to see Master Talent. Is that okay with you guys? You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, shit. And then I go back to the phone. It's like, let's just see the Northman. I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah, we're all, we're it's all like, over we, the We kept place. going back and forth like, Northman. Blah, 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 blah. But finally, we fucking got our shit in order. We went and saw it. No spoilers. Um, eh, there's going to be spoilers probably. Um, I, don't I guess really I, uh, can talk about this movie. I'll put that on the screen. The- um Hold on. I'm going to fucking, we'll get, when we get to the spoilery part, I'll put the shit up on the screen so you can know that spoilers are happening, okay? So, uh, I think I might even have the text for that already. Yes, I do. There you go. So, uh, this text will appear when we get to the spoilery part, but me and Sky have not talked about this at all yet. I think we said we're going to, like, count to three and then give our opinions. So, just like, you know, in one word kind of thing. Like, just say, like, good, bad, mediocre, whatever the fuck word you fucking would summarize it with, basically. Yeah, right? I, have a, I, have a, I have a turn of phrase, dude. Well, save your turn of phrase for after, because we can fucking... You want to... A turn of phrase isn't going to work simultaneously, so it needs to be, like, a one-word thing, and then you can it's do a, your turn of phrase. Well, it, it, it's a pretty short one. Okay. All right, all right, TJ, are you ready? All right. One. Two. Three. Great. It's all right. Great, dude. No, nope, you're wrong, dude. It's all right. Great, dude. It's all right. I, I knew that, dude. I fucking knew it. I it's fucking right. knew it. Come in here, dude. I, dude, I knew it, man. I knew it, TJ. I freaking knew it. Yeah. I knew, Dude, I, I I can just get a sense for you, man. Yeah. I I, I, I had a feel for you coming in. Dude. TJ's going to be like, eh, it's all right. It's all right. Oh, TJ, they they made cage, cage great again, dude. I would say, I would even go, I would even take it to the level of Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Not too bad. It was, uh, how do you say, well, pretty good. I pretty, suppose. pretty, pretty aight. Pretty goddamn so, aight. What do you, uh, what do you rate the movie on a scale from one to ten? Or however you rate movies. I don't know. Everyone's different. I usually do one to ten. Um, I do one to ten usually, but some people do different shit. I'm going to say eight. Eight, you'd say? I say eight. Um... I don't want to go as low as six, but I don't want to go as high as seven. I'm going to say six point six point seventy five. <laughs> I normally wouldn't. I, wouldn't, I normally wouldn't split the hairs down to that level, but uh, but yeah, I'm going to do that for this. Like six, six and three quarters. Little shy of a seven, just a, a little cunt hair shy of being a seven, which I would say is good. I'd say seven is where I'm at good. I'd say from like five to to seven, five to just under seven is like pretty good. All right, fucking seven is good. Eight, I would not consider great. I'd I'd say eight's like really good. So and then nine and ten are great for me. I'm a little bit higher than IMDb and shit. Uh, I'm so it's IMDb has this movie at seven point eight. Ron Tomatoes has it at eighty nine. Metacritic is pretty much almost right on with you, sixty seven percent. Right. Yeah, that's pretty close to what I said. Uh, I'll tell you what, the thing I don't, I, I just find it's like the most. Is Are we getting into spoilers? The oh, the name. Let me know when we're getting into spoiler talk. Cause I want to let people know and shit. So they don't get all fucking pissy, which is it, all it did just come out at least. Like if yeah. you guys are talking about a movie that came out like more than a year ago or something, I'd be like, fuck you and your little spoiler bullshit. But since this did just come out, I'll be fucking nice to you about it. Uh, so mainly just because I'm a stoner. So it's like, I'm seeing, I've seen 
like literally we we're in line to get like like snacks and shit and these two girls in front of us oh it's me and taylor went to see this movie mm-hmm. like what are you guys going to see and we're like uh nicholas cage movie <laughs> like we're gonna go see nicholas cage the movie and, then, and of course there were zoomers so they're like oh okay like who the fuck I, is fucking nickel i don't even know um piss Unbearable weight of massive talent. Yeah. I yeah, noticed even in the marketing they were just calling it massive talent. <laughs> yeah, it does have a it does like, have a weird uh, it does have a weak title. Kind of reminds me of uh, another movie. You know another movie that had a really terrible title, but was also a shitty movie, so it didn't really matter that much. Was um Tu Wong Fu th- Wong wait, Wong Fu uh, Thanks Wong for everything, Fu. Julie Newmar. Yeah. Or don't be a menace to South Central while drinking your juice in the hood, which everyone just called don't be a menace. You know, there's like all these fucking <laughs> these movies with like these long titles. I think they're all being all cutesy and shit, but it's like, nah, you're just making your movie title fucking unwieldy. Don't do it because <laughs> no one's going to be like, you know, oh, man, did you guys see the unbearable weight of massive talent? It's like, Come on. Just call it like. I don't know, like, <laughs> um, this might be like one of his those name movies. is his name is Nicholas Cage, so like you could probably fucking have like a a fucking title like Uncaged or something, you know, Nicholas Uncaged or just like the Nicholas Cage movie, <laughs> even just like anything, really. I don't know. This kind of reeks of like doesn't even make be- fucking sense. By the way, I mean it does, I guess, but it's like eh. this might get retitled when it gets released again. That happens to a lot of movies when they're like. It's like, uh, this title was not exactly the best title for the movie, but I mean, that's a pretty minor complaint, you know? Yeah. I mean, like like whatever the, the title don't really fucking affect much other than just like, that's like a more marketing thing than anything else. Uh, positive for me too, is it's rated R. Yes, that's true. That's one of the things I was like, but it's not like, it's not like a super raunchy R though. It's just like some cursing. Like there's really not, there's really not any gore. There's not any nudity. So it's really just a it's really just an R for like some f bombs basically. Oh uh, well, yeah, some of the lines in the movie y- you'll know why. Right. Uh, but I mean, honestly, in the comedy landscape we have now, uh, pretty refreshing overall. They actually get an R release that actually has some excitement around. Pretty it. Pretty interesting to actually get a movie. I have it's been so long since I've seen a movie that was like just outright a comedy. Like I, it has other elements going on, but like. It's one of the few times it's like, okay, this is like I'm literally just seeing a comedy film. It's not it's not primarily an action or fucking Marvel thing or something. It's just literally it's like it's a fucking it's a comedy before it's anything else, right? Uh, and, the, and the movie even references that. Yes. I mean, because uh, the best talking about this movie, I mean, here's the fucking synopsis. I mean, not that it really matters, but if you, if you guys want the synopsis of the movie, here it is. Unfulfilled and facing financial ruin, actor Nick Cage accepts a $1 million offer to attend a wealthy fan's birthday party. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, hijinks start ensuing. Hijinks uh, ensue. <laughs> uh, some CIA people show up and like, we need to recruit you, Nicolas Cage. Because your friend, your buddy here is a fucking mob, uh, is a cartel boss and blah, 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 blah. He's an arms dealer and you, we got to get this and you got to save this girl. This girl's been kidnapped. There's an election going on in Spade and you need to make sure that, you know, we, we can find her and, you know, obviously restore her to her family and not have this election rigged or have this guy drop out of this election. Honestly, that plot, the plot, I mean, it's like there to kind of like drive things along and stuff, but like. You can tell mostly this movie is not super interested in its own plot. It's kind of like, all right, we got to have some kind of plot there. There you go. You know, (laughs) that'll let us do a few things with it. Uh, So the beginning of the movie uh, is probably one of my favorite parts with it, just simply because it just gets Nick Cage to be like, when when he's trying to sell that fucking director on his performance and he just goes full on and like, okay, let me just go like full on to this character because I'm going to sell this guy. And like just the desperation uh, that he brings to it, like uh, the whole movie, Nicolas Cage is basically playing like a character version of himself, like act, like kind of how people feel imagine TJ, mm-hmm. like oh TJ and his YouTube videos is TJ in real life. It's the same thing with Nicolas Cage. It's like people assume Nick Cage is like going a hundred miles an hour. He's over the top. He's insane twenty four seven. If you meet Nicolas Cage, it's like oh my god, I just met Nick Cage. He's insane. He's crazy. You know, when by most accounts that he's you know, a pretty shy kind of laid back guy. That's not really anything like the characters he plays. Right. <laughs> you know, so, but, but of course, 
But of course. Uh, so you get some scenes like that where it's like, you know, he's he's in debt. Things aren't going well for him. Oh, my God. You you know, you're staying, staying at, uh, like, uh, at some hotel. He gets locked out of his hotel. He's got nothing going on. He doesn't get the big role. Oh, what, what can I do? Well, earlier on in the movie, like, hey, there's an offer to go to this party. You get a million bucks just to go to some rich dude's party. And he's like, oh, fuck it. I'm not going to do that. Calls up his uh, agent, played by Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> like, I, I thought it was actually pretty good as a uh, little toady that just basically just, yep, yes, sir. Whatever you want, sir. You yeah. know, like, well, I, I, I love during that phone call where it's like, yeah, that party. Oh, it was a terrible, horrible, depressing idea. He's like, I'm going to do it. Oh, great. Wonderful. Yeah, you're going to have <laughs> a great like, time, Nick. Great time. <laughs> it's going to be great. That money is going to be awesome. So he immediately just goes in for the money. And then it's just like, from there, the movie just gets more and more wild. Uh, it's definitely a, a, like a super meta movie that is completely going to break the fourth wall. Yeah, I mean, the movie gets pretty meta. Um, honestly, like... For me, uh, the plot stuff almost kind of like gets in the way. Oh um, yeah, it's just it is. So the fact, I mean, like the fact that the third act is kind of like uh, entirely devoted to this, like obviously, like, like they even kind of like sh- tell you that they don't even really care about the plot. Like in the movie, they're kind of just like, all right, well, it's time for the like actiony third act to like appease everybody or whatever. And then they gonna get just, just deliver on like I guess I should put up the spoilers thing at this point. Um, yeah, uh, it's, uh, that's an appropriate time. If yeah, you know, uh, have so let me spoiled. like get into like some of the reasons why this movie does not have a higher score from me. Um, sure. So uh, the third act of this movie, be, it, the movie basically becomes a generic action sequence. And I thought like the, the movie was so smart up until that point that I thought it would have some kind of like commentary on what it was doing. But it seemed like it was it kind of Deadpool to me where they feel like pointing out that they're doing something dumb and lazy is enough to like, oh, well, they pointed out that they're, it's dumb and lazy, so I guess it's fine now. Eh, not really. <laughs> no, you, you, do, you do something dumb and lazy, pointing out that you're doing it does not like, oh, wow, now my, my criticisms of it evaporate, right? Um, so the third act of this movie really kind of sucks. If the, first, if the first two acts, if the third act had been more reflective of the first two acts of this movie, I'd probably be sitting here sucking its cock. I'd probably be giving it like an eight and saying it was really good, but uh, I, I'll admit that they did a little bit better with that in the second act, uh, especially with the, the shotgun scene where they're like basically they're shooting clays. Yeah, and that was like, great. Scene. I mean, there's a lot of great scenes and like Nicholas well, Cage they, and um, it's like we 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 need that we need that scene because obviously like they even admit like this is basically for the trailer. The scene is entirely so the trailer has some shit with me pointing a gun at you and being like no or whatever like what. Let me, uh, what? what's that dude's uh, name that plays, um, Javi in that movie? Uh, so the actors in it, Nick Cage, uh, Pedro Pascal, Pedro Pas- Pascal, 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 uh, Pascal? whatever, whatever his name is. I don't know. Whatever his fucking name is. Him and Nicolas Cage are great. They have terrific chemistry together. The, the fucking friendship that they forged together in this movie is like really believable and, uh, really fucking charming and likable. And, uh, you know, probably one of the best, like, on-screen sort of just, like, friendships that I've seen in a long time. Um, it's so, like, it, it's honestly like... like it's kind of it, sad that, you know, this movie just degenerates in the third <clears throat> act into something that's very, like, generic and cliche. And then just thinks that, like, well, if we point it out, then, like, that, it'll all be forgiven. It's like... It's, like the, bro, it's like the bro comedy, dude. Yeah. It's, like <laughs> it, it, it's kind of like the return of that. It almost feels like... Uh, I feel, I feel about like Seth Rogen and James Franco and shit. Like it's just two actors that have a shit ton of chemistry and it really works. And I mean, those two should definitely co- collaborate again. If this movie has shown anything, those two do work really well together. And like, honestly, that's what you really need. To, I think to be successful in comedy. And I think, and I think it's kind of like just a, a kind of a sad state of affairs that we don't have more comedies coming out. I mean, especially I think that people like just this. don't want to. I think a lot of people just don't want to go to the theater for it because it doesn't seem like comedies don't seem big enough now for the theater experience, especially as so much stuff is just coming around. So much stuff of like movie level quality, you know, you know, Hollywood cinematic quality is like coming to direct to streaming services and stuff like that. So it kind of destroys the idea of like you need to see this comedy on the big screen. You know? <laughs> well, Hollywood's, I mean, they backpedal the pandemic. I feel like. And obviously the pandemic's still going on. If we got to be honest here, sure, but, uh, but no one cares anymore, though. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but, but the lack of people giving a shit about it, uh, I'm seeing more and more now as a, as someone that's been to the theater, you know, a few times recently. 
I'm starting to see pop up only in theaters, only in theaters. So they're really trying to drive people back into going to the movies again. Mm -hmm. I think it's only a matter of time before that's going to happen. Uh, There's just too much incentive to, you know, go other places, though, is the real problem. Like, well, like uh, they have a rough time trying to get someone to come. Like the problem with with going. I mean, I think a movie like this is worth going to theaters to see. But the problem with it is you got this very like expensive sort of fucking thing and you know when people go to the theater now they want some sort of huge spectacle and this movie is not a huge spectacle it's a fucking character driven fucking comedy that's fucking primarily aimed at fucking adults so you know it, you're not gonna fucking it's not that's not gonna get a million asses in seats you know this is a movie that i think a lot of people will <laughs> like because there's a lot Agreed. to like about it but um it's not like it's, it's not, not some epic pole. fucking thing, you know. It's not a tent pole. I mean, on, and honestly, like th that that this week is gonna go to the Northman, one hundred percent. The Northman is just it's it's bigger budget, ninety million dollar budget. This one's probably a twenty thirty million dollar budget movie. I mean, by no means a small production for the uh, unbearable weight of massive talent. But you're, I mean, I have to agree with you on that point. But overall, I mean, we I think we need more films like this. I mean, so even if you're you know given a little bit of a lower rating. I don't think you can argue the point at all that we need more shit like this. I mean, we, so we, the problem... We, we, we need more shit to break the mold because, you know... Well, it, the problem with that kind of rating, though, too, is that, like, I'm rating kind of, like, the movie overall, but, like, you could also kind of just say, like, there's, um... Like, there's parts of this movie... Like, the first two acts of this movie, like I said, I'd probably give an eight and an eight, but the fucking last act, you'd probably give, like, a fucking, I don't know, a four or something. It drags the whole I mean, fucking but, thing down. Isn't that, isn't that really, honestly... The, <laughs> the huge issue w w with that necessarily is the fact that endings mostly suck. And I yeah, mean, but you I'm, know, usually like the very ending sucks. This movie, the entire third act, kind of just fucking degenerates into this like why, generic why action think, film. But I think well, you could have done that and but like made some kind of like commentary on it with all the stuff you'd set up before. I don't know exactly how. What do you think but, about you know? Obviously, <clears throat> it devolves into like we got to go to the fucking the, the bad guy's lair. We got to go into the lair. Right. Uh, Corn pop, stop it! <laughs> Corn pop objects. No, <coughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, I was a bit for uh, I, that. I admit is a bit more formulaic, but I mean, it was funny making uh, Nicholas Cage into some <laughs> the worst Italian gangster of all time. As far yeah, as, I mean, that didn't work and shit. But I mean, you know, it was like whatever. That, you know, uh, but Nicholas Cage is a very over the top, you know, character. So I mean, like yeah. any character he plays, even, even when he's playing the character within the character, within the character, you know, he's <laughs> He's going to be over the top. Uh, th so, I mean, I, I could see that, but I think probably the weakest part of that to me is not even the whole Deadpool 2 kind of setup. It's really when, like, they throw the knife at the very end, and it's like, oh, it's a movie now. They made this into a movie, and it's like we're in a movie within a movie within a movie kind of thing. And you, the thing about it is you don't really... There's not like a an exact moment that you know you've be, you're you're watching the movie within the movie, you know? So it's, like, kind of seamless, I guess. Yeah, oh, yeah. There's like a knife throw, and the way the shan, uh, the, not the shan, the, sh the shot uh, pans, like as the knife goes across, it's in like, oh, it gets the it gets the bad guy, and, and it's Nick Cage. But then he pans over and it sees like Demi Moore is his wife and shit. Yeah. It's like, oh, so now it's all he's at, and, and, and his family has changed to some Hollywood version. And they do, and like they do like a slow mo run, like, Daddy, you saved the day. I sure did. I'm Nicholas Cage. <laughs> Um, I did like how it, it made, uh, uh, like, definitely it made fun of Hollywood with the whole awards thing. It's like, <laughs> and the whole movie, they they had, the, like, they kept repeating the line, like, um, uh, you were, like, like, what was it? Like, we were like, we're not going places or we, we never left or something. You're yeah. Not, you know, like, like, you they, know, like they kept, yeah, it's like, you're back. Not, I mean, it's like, I'm going to get back. Not that I went anywhere, you know. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> I'm back. But it's like, all right, whatever. Just admit to yourself. Yeah. Like, just just get over it, dude. You got to admit that, uh, you know, you were gone. You were gone, Nick Cage. I don't ever think he was gone, honestly. But, you know, if no, in no. terms of, like, being that, like, big, giant Hollywood, you know, like, obviously the fucking level of films he was doing in terms of, like, at least production budget went way down, so. Uh, and, I mean, of course, the, the common thread being when people were talking about his little movies, they were talking about the shit he did in the 90s, for mm -hmm. the most part. I mean... He had National Treasure and stuff, but that's kind of when he did the more of the arc. Like, I'm now starring in family movies. 
Yeah, that sucked. Which is like, oh. Well, Sorry. National Treasure was fine. National Treasure 2 sucked, though, for some reason. I don't know why. National Treasure 1 was one of those movies that totally fucking surprised me. Yeah, it's like, oh, that's like, actually pretty cool. But then, you know, <clears throat> not so uh, much probably, of the Probably follow-ups. European had a better ending, too. What? <clears throat> You know, this movie, you know, one thing I'll say about this movie is it's kind of made me curious to watch Paddington 2 because <laughs> they make such a big deal out of, out of about it. I'm like, is this movie like it was like Paddington 2 was like critically adored at the time it came out. This movie is sucking its cock. I'm just like, is this movie like really legitimately good? Because like, I really don't want to fucking see it. It has but a I'm 99% start- on Rotten Tomatoes. I know. I'm starting right. to just get fucking curious about it because like. What is I don't it know. with Paddington 2? I don't fucking know. Like, do we, I, I, <laughs> I guess I need to go fucking watch it, even though I really, like, have zero urge to do that. But, like, so many people suck its fucking dick. I mean, movie. Another movie told you to watch it. I mean, just right. think about that. that. That's such a rare thing. I can't even, I, I'm not even sure if I can It's think like when I like, walked out of Zombieland, all I wanted was a fucking Twinkie, you know? And it's like. Oh, you know what? There's one other movie that really fucking nailed that home. Um, Ted with Flash Gordon. It's like, you gotta watch Flash Gordon. Yeah. Best fucking movie ever. Then Best afterwards, I'm fucking like, movie. Dude, because like, I was like, after that, I'm like, I gotta watch fucking Flash Gordon. Gotta I gotta fucking see what the fuck they're talking about, man. <laughs> I got to which, know. Which I, definitely, I definitely enjoyed, but I don't know. Paddington too. That seems like that's like a. I, I'm I'm skeptical, dude. It's not my kind of fucking movie. It's definitely not my kind of fucking movie either. I mean, especially you. Yeah, you're the kind of person that doesn't even. Watch I don't even that fucking. Kind of I don't. I don't want that shit at all. But like, goddamn, if is this? It's like apparently some transcendently fucking good goddamn movie. So maybe I need to fucking see it. So you're just saying that basically the last, the third act. Even though it's like, oh, hey. I just felt like I was watching this movie that was like very cool. It was like a fucking cool ass movie about Nicolas Cage and this dude fucking getting to know each other. And every time the plot would intrude, I was kind of just like, go away. Get out of this fucking movie plot. You suck. And, you know, yeah, then, uh, um, you know, but it was just like the moments, like all the best moments of this movie are just like the character driven moments between, you know, Nicolas Cage and, and Javi um, where they're, you know, they're driving through town on acid and they're freaking out about like, are those dudes watching us, man? <laughs> you know, so that's and they're trying to jump over works. fucking this fence and there's <laughs> just, you could just easily go around it. And it's like, I don't know. There's like all these little cool, fun moments and you know, the way that like they, their relationship forms and stuff. It's just like, wow, watching this like budding friendship happen is so, is so cool. And then like, I, I like the acting. With and then the there's like this too. weird, like dumb and dumber esque fucking forced action plot going on in the background like oh yeah well he's a cartel and the cia is there and da, 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 da. you know and it's like i don't know man that that shit just kind of like for me drags the whole fucking movie down um i kind of just agree with them when they were like even like the meta construct like the meta narrative within the movie seemed to acknowledge like this is just for like commercial purposes but it's like man fuck those commercial purposes a, i was having way more fun with the other good. stuff it's Lionsgate, a hundred percent, with that. Yeah, I, 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 don't think the people that conceived this movie had any interest in that shit. I think the first two acts reflect that. Like, I mean, honestly, reading about it, this movie was like a wing and a prayer. Like, this was a total movie where it was like, let's like, like, let's pitch this crazy ass idea that involves intimately one actor. That if they don't sign on to it, will the movie even be made? Can the movie even be made? It's like, know. yeah, it's like, uh. I mean, we actually have an article about that too. If you want to take a look, but, um, yeah, apparently, uh, before uh, Nicholas Cage signed on, because actually Nicholas Cage did refuse this this uh, movie a few times in a row. Um, so uh, they were originally thinking about like, well, how can we? We can't make this movie without Nicholas Cage, can we? Like, well, maybe we can, you know. <laughs> so they were actually looking at some other people to play Nicholas Cage. Um, Daniel Day Lewis, who I thought was retired, but maybe they thought they could unretire him. He's come out of retirement before, I, I believe. Um, the unbelievable weight of massive talent screenwriter Kevin Eaton uh, has revealed that the filmmakers behind the movie considered Daniel Day Lewis or Christian Bale for the role of Nicolas Cage if Cage opted not to play himself. The film follows a fictionalized version of the face off actor hired to visit the home of a rich fan, Pedro Pascal. Unbearable weight of massive talent hit the, hits theaters uh, this weekend and is currently earning strong reviews from critics. Massive talent is a profound and meta exploration of Cage's legacy in Hollywood. Uh, the film sees the actor portray a version of himself who has fallen on hard times 
and struggling to find the roles, eventually he is lured to the island of a rich cage superfan named Javi, Pedro Pascal, with the promise of $1 million for attending a birthday. From there, Cage finds himself recruited by the CIA to conduct surveillance on the man who hired him. Uh, now that the unbearable weight of massive talent has debuted in theaters, uh, new information on the development of the project has emerged. In a recent interview with THR, screenwriter e uh, Kevin Eaton confirms that there were original takes on the project that would have either Day-Lewis or Bale stepping in to actually play Cage. Eaton said, there were times when I think I, more than Tom, was trying to talk myself into other ideas. The only actually good idea, I don't know whose it was, was to have Christian Bale or Daniel J. Lewis playing Nick Cage. But really, no. <laughs> I'd have no. to say, like, the movie should just not be made at that point. Like, if you can't get Nick Cage, then just don't fucking, don't fucking I mean, make the movie, you know? Daniel Lewis is a fucking great actor, but this is a movie that you just cannot make without Nicolas Cage. Yeah, like... Nicolas Cage being himself in this movie is like absolutely essential. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's beyond essential. It's like required. It's like, yeah, you can't, you cannot. I love the yeah. film summary too. That is, uh, is just dripping with the film. Cause I mean, like, I feel like that's a big part of Cage's contribution is like definitely the love of expressionism, you know, the cabinet of Dr. Uh, Caligari or what is it? Uh, yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, referenced over and over again, which we actually watched on uh, one of our commentaries when we were back when we were doing those. Yeah, pretty cool movie. Yeah, definitely an awesome fucking flick. But just like to hear that mention, it's like, okay, this is like Nicolas Cage. This is like his personal preference coming Damn. out. Damn. You're a fucking donkey, TJ. Damn. You're a donkey. Yeah, uh, Nicolas Cage has actually, I think, said Pig is his favorite movie he's ever done. So I've, I've yet to watch it. But yeah, he recently did a Reddit AMA. I think he had three top movies. Yeah. Uh, I think they but I believe that, that was the tippy tippy top. I know. Um, I think it was like leaving Las Vegas was one of them. I can't remember the other two, but pig might've been one pig. Have you seen pig? No, not yet. I still need to watch that one. I have not watched it. I've been meaning to, I just haven't gotten around to it as of yet. But, but the director talking about this movie too, uh, basically just said that as, oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I almost dropped some fucking shit on myself. No, you didn't. You're a fucking liar, bitch. You're a fucking lying, stinking ass motherfucker is what you is. I'm a lying mother. How am I a lying motherfucker? You're lying, Sky, because you didn't drop shit. No, I, said I, almost, I said I almost dropped yeah, some shit see? on Yeah, see? Oh, the story changes. Story changes now. Very convenient. Very fucking convenient, Scotty. Wow. Wow. Uh, you know what they, uh, so I was I've written this article about it, but they almost said that they want to get if they do a sequel, they want to get Jeff Goldblum to be in it. Jeff Goldblum, uh, yeah. Is this gonna be like hey. the the fucking beginning of like Jeff Goldblum has never been like, <laughs> I don't know. Jeff Goldblum has never been like a fucking has been though. Like he's always gotten pretty steady character work and shit. So, you know, like he was a, he was a leading man for like five minutes a hundred years ago, but like mostly he's been a character actor his whole life. And I don't think there's ever been a time when, like, he wasn't doing that. So, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you could really do it as well. Man, yeah, I guess it depends on the concept. Yeah, one of the things, too, about <clears throat> that I read about uh, Nick Cage in this movie is, like, he didn't want to be seen as, like, a bad father. So, like, that's why that's why there's, like, the whole redemption arc with him with his, like, family. He's, he's like, that's yeah, right. not really me. He's he, doesn't, like, he doesn't really have a, a family like that and shit, so... I mean, he's got it's he's like, got family, but that's like the his family is completely fictional he, in the movie. Oh yeah, he, he's but he's like he's present for his family. You know what I mean? Right. And he's not like he's not the absentee dad they make him out to be. But I mean, just another fucking element to it, and, and kind of what you would expect. Like honestly, I think from that perspective, like the perspective, I think the screenwriter really had the perspective of like how would people perceive Nicolas Cage? Like they would like I don't think they would like you know they're necessarily going like obviously they're going for elements of the realism, but like back to that kind of expressionism thing, just like the over the top caricature of the character, like the character, like, like, you know, back in those movies, you had to way overact. And that's what Nicholas Cage is known for. He's known for his overacting. So it's like, it makes more sense for his character to be that like, Oh, he's the drunk dad. Dude, I, I did love that piano scene too, where it's like, it's his daughter's birthday party shows up. He didn't get the role. So he's like, oh, I gotta take this call. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm on the phone. What? <laughs> yeah. They're going a different direction pours himself a tall fucking glass of whiskey or whatever the fuck it is. Shows up like pretty much drunk. 
or comes in there drunk. Like, I made up a thong for you, sweetie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so there was moments in this movie that just killed. But I mean, I have to agree with you. Most of the comedic moments that killed like, are like, dude, the acid trip scene, one of my favorite movie scenes of all time. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that whole, the whole sequence of them going to town on acid is like yeah. pretty much just like funny throughout the entire the sequence. just walks up with like, <laughs> with like that. Like, what is this? Like, we need inspiration because at, at the party we're talking about. So, you know, Nick Cage is invited to this birthday party, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, so, so when they get to the party, it's like, oh, shit, I got to keep the CIA thing going. I want to make a movie with you, Javi. Oh, my God. Will you make this movie with me? He's like, do you want to do my screenplay? He's like, no, but I do want to make a movie with you. Let me stay longer. It's like, OK, so he's staying. Oh, yeah, they're going to fucking do acid. He pulls out the acid and they go to town and do just like. The, the ability to take something that would be normally so banal, but capture that drug experience in such like an authentic way within like such a meta, you know, meta, like weird over the top movie. That's one of the things that definitely impressed me, too. I feel like a lot of times, dude, when, when I love his text message to the fucking um, the agent when he was like, fucked up <laughs> oh, on yeah. acid, you know, and he was like, yeah, in Donnie Brasco situation, BRB, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, dude. Oh, that's so fucking funny, dude. Texting the CIA. I'm high on acid, but just so you know. Yeah, yeah high on acid had to would blow my cover if I didn't, you know, it's like, oh, God, dude, I love that. Oh, it was so fucking. That was funny, man. That was yeah, the, the funniest f- shit. If the whole movie, uh, I, see, I I, th- I wanted the whole movie to be more like that, like more like freeform, crazy, just like let's fucking like totally like the movie is built around Nicolas Cage, so like do a fucking Nicolas Cage movie, you know, like build it around Nick every fucking talent that Nicolas Cage has. It's even called massive talent, so like display his massive talent. That fucking sequence totally does, um, you know. <laughs> I feel like there's other fucking sequences where it's almost like, yeah, anyone could, this is a cool little sequence, but anyone could do this, you know? Um, but I guess, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, he's got like a fucking I mean, capacity to do all that shit. It, isn't it in a way also a criticism of all these guys that are like Nick Cage, like Liam Neeson and the, like, you know, until recently, like Bruce yeah. Willis and all these people that like they, later on in their career, it's like they don't go like the family route, but they go like, I'm in a million go the generic movies. fucking terrible action movie route. Yeah, yeah exactly. You get the nail on the head. Just the generable, generic action movie roll, uh, roll after roll. Where it's Nicholas like Cage, I can say, like based on what I saw in this movie, could still do an action movie. He does not because he's like, I don't know. He still has enough physicality to do it. A lot of these fucking guys who are doing that, like Liam Neeson, needing like a million jump cuts to do one little fucking jump over a fence. Like Nicholas Cage <laughs> could have done that without needing a fucking million jump cuts. Like he actually has some fucking chops. Um you know, so well, I, I, I think you even say that with the shit with the wall. It's like, you know, we, oh, we got to go over this wall. And obviously the way it's shot, it looks like there's only one way through through this wall. And it's over right. It. But Nicholas and, Cage still has to fucking like display a little bit of athleticism in getting up that fucking wall. You know, maybe that was a stunt guy. I don't know. But if it was, it was nice and seamless. It wasn't like <laughs> use 10 million jump cuts to fucking cut him over the wall, basically. But I mean, I, I think that's why you saw that element of the movie too, though. Is what yeah. I'm saying. Because, and I love that. I, mean, like, I love that he had. I love that his like younger self is like in his head as this um, sort of oh, like yeah, Nicky. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like the, he's like the really crazy, over the top Nicolas Cage that you know uh, you, you've seen in like some of these wilder performances. That you're a fucking movie star. Don't you forget it. I mean. And another fucking just total jab at the narcissism of fucking Hollywood, where he literally, when Nikki shows up again, you know, his, basically like his imaginary friend, and he makes out with himself. That yeah, was that was fucking there. hilarious, dude. dude. I was dying when that happened. <laughs> I was like, oh, are you fucking like, cause, I mean, because really, it's just like it mocking just, the fucking like Hollywood ego kind of thing, you know? Oh, hundred percent, dude. Just like I just love that moment, and that, and like it's like something like you know, like you watch Ricky Gervais doing like the Golden Globes or whatever. It's like just that level of like of like fuck this, dude. You know what I mean? Like fuck this shit, and we're just gonna make fun of it, and which is like really what you need with stuff like this. Like you need because Hollywood takes itself so fucking seriously. It has a tendency oh, yeah. just to be super serious, fart sniffing, like, oh my god, we're so this, and we're so woke, and we're so progressive, and it's like, wow, we're so cute. 
So and, cute. And just lacking the ability to ever laugh at yourself. And, you know, I, I feel like that movie brought all that. And I agree with you. Maybe the third act wasn't perfect, but to me, just the net positives of all that. Not, you know, I was just, just surprised to see just how much it, like a movie that had something to say, became just a generic action movie for the entire fucking end of the movie. You know, and I'm just like I completely blame the studio for that. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I don't know. I feel like you could have done some of that stuff and still kind of retained more of the fucking feeling. So well, I don't look, know. Well, look at the way the movie was marketed. The movie was I, I you know, you definitely had an idea was like, this isn't your run of the mill fucking comedy or film. I feel like it. they could have just, so I think, feel like it should have been more sold and like come experience a crazy Nicolas Cage movie. You know, well, like, they, they talk about it. it's like, like, oh, you got to hook people in. He's like, yeah, you got to hook him in. You can't get asked. But like the way hook to hook in. them in is like with a super generic drug cartel plot. I mean, I don't know. I feel like you could probably sell people more with like, it's going to be unfettered, crazy ass Nicolas Cage. It's going to be like meme Nicolas Cage, the movie. So I just don't it. fucking trust the public, dude. I they're guess just like, like, they're just like, no, I'm probably, oh, I'm probably in saying this overestimating the intelligence of the American people. So. Yeah, fuck me. I don't. I don't know what I'm talking about with that. Because if I uh, did, <laughs> you know, you're probably right about that. I'm probably giving them way too much fucking credit. I'm going to marathon Nick uh, Cage soon, maybe tomorrow. Then I can go see this movie. Yeah, um, definitely see. Uh, you should probably watch Face Off for sure. Oh, I think yeah. you should watch the. I think you should watch that one where he's a vampire or he thinks he's a vampire. Um, the fuck is that movie called? It's not Shadow of the Vampire. Um, Vampires in Brooklyn? No, 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 no. That's fucking Eddie Murphy. That's sucks. Um, no, um, hey. God, what the fuck is it called? He's like, it's it's fucking hilarious. He like runs Vampire's down the street. Kiss. Yeah, Vampire's, Vampire's kiss. kiss, dude. It's fucking, it's the most over the top ridiculous performance you could ever fucking imagine. It is so fucking funny. Um, he's like just, he's terrific in that. I mean, he's like, you don't know if he's like intentionally hamming it up or if he's just really awful, but like whatever the whatever like whatever the chasm might be between intent and what happened is uh I don't know it, it it's just like the most entertaining fucking performance I've ever seen anyone fucking give. I don't think anyone's ever fucking done Nick, a more Nick. pound for pound entertaining fucking performance than Nick Cage and Vampire's Kiss. Nick um, Cage is an old school, it just really is an old school actor. I mean, that's really what it is. So yeah, it's I mean, like, like he has like, you know, he definitely gets like you, you listen. If you listen to him talk about like his craft and shit, he fucking is way more into like German expressionist fucking styles of acting. Like si he likes silent film era where everything is like insanely overacted because you have to convey it without, um, you know, without words. Yeah, without uh, I mean, hardly any real dialogue. I mean, maybe a few sentences here or there. But Vampire's Kiss should definitely be on your watch list. Um for your Nicolas Cage marathon, Face Off should definitely be on it. Con Air should probably be on it because that's factors in a number of times. Um, although I think Con Air is kind of a dumb fucking movie, but whatever. It's I guess it's kind of fun. Another one I um, love is The Rock. The, the Rock, Rock is a great it. fucking movie. Uh, cool. Only fucking good Michael Bay movie, I think. I don't even like Bad Boys that much, to be honest with you. I uh, haven't seen Pig. Mandy you should definitely see. I don't know if you need to see Mandy to see this one, but... You should just see Mandy because Mandy's fucking insanely dope. But Mandy's probably oh, my favorite Nicolas Cage movie, if I'm honest. I mean, the really the ones I've seen. An, an ideal movie for him, too, because, I mean, the dialogue in that movie is minimal. I mean, that, that's that, the great thing about Nicolas Cage, though. It's like you can give him a very dialogue heavy character and he'll fucking kill it. And you can give him a fucking character that doesn't say a goddamn word and he'll kill it. You know, so like whatever, whatever you give him, he's going to fucking chew. He's going to chew it up. I mean, it, spit I'll it back in what, your face. However you feel about it, it's a really a brilliant film that markets itself, though. Yes. And, and it's going to make a bunch of money because Nick Cage is just someone that's always. I don't I mean, know if it's since, necessarily going to make a bunch in theaters, but I think that this movie is going to have a long life because it's kind of unique. And I feel like yeah, it's but, actually kind of heartwarming, too. Like, it's a, it's a pretty fucking it's a pretty nice little movie. It's like. This movie's like surprisingly wholesome, I would say. You know what I mean? Like it has a real wholesome feel cuz it's just like the primary thing it's about is friendship. And this guy is just having a nice little friendship and becoming friends 
and like really getting along with each other and really liking each other's company and kind of like reinvigorating each other's lives and like helping each other become better people. And that's just like, I don't know. You don't really see that kind of movie too much anymore. Everything's fucking, you know, grim, dark, fucking the weight of the world is on me, you know, and this movie is like not so much like that. So kind of cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd say it's, I mean, it's good. I, I just think, I hate that it gets bogged down in some generic bullshit towards the end, but whatever that is what it is. Um, I feel like I've said pretty much everything I have to say about it. I don't know if there's anything you have left. No, I mean, I highly recommend you guys te- check it out. I mean, TJ might not feel as, uh, I guess as strong about it as I do, but I just feel like it's a movie that was really needed to be made. Color out of space is great. I mean, I don't, I don't know why. Uh, I mean, I, I, I do know why Nicholas Cage's later career has been shit on because he's done so much garbage. But like, honestly, he's never stopped making good shit. Like, he's <laughs> always continued to make good shit too. I mean, I mean, if we pivot anywhere, it's just like uh, out of disgusting. This film in particular is just that. Yeah, Nicholas Cage. I mean, look, his low point was, in my opinion, was definitely left behind. Oh my that god, to yeah, me that was, was like horrible. that was the worst yeah. I've ever seen him. Yeah, that was like really phoning it in. But I mean, a lot of shit, unfortunately, that was the case of, I think, a lot of personal shit going on in his life. Like, and it's even touched on the movie. It's like, like you know, his career wasn't in the best spot. He owed a lot of money. He owed tax debts. He was supporting a mom who was basically deteriorating mentally. You know, he had a lot of, he just had a lot of shit on his plate that <laughs> I don't feel like he could, he could prioritize his career as much and obviously it definitely suffered for that reason and if you know when you got money like you said like he's an actor he's got bills to pay and i mean honestly not not boohoo nicholas cage was a millionaire many times over but you'd be surprised how quick that money goes if you live a lifestyle like nicholas cage <laughs> i mean nicholas cage is nicholas cage for a reason but that money goes quick and he definitely found himself at some pretty low points but i agree with you like i mean there was even when he was doing the smaller films the more indie route that he was going yeah, but I feel there like was, so much of what he did then was like, yeah, he did a lot of fucking movies that were clearly just like, can you pay me? Okay, I'll do it. But I mean, he was, un, he was in tremendous financial, was like, he was tremendous debt, basically, at that point. But It was like um, that season of The Witch, that was a horrible one he was in. Yeah, let me fucking just go to his IMDb. It's going to be eternal. There's been like 7,000 movies, but um, let's see. Yeah, he's been in 100, yeah, 110 fucking movies, which is pretty crazy. Um... I know he's doing this uh, Renfield movie. I don't even see Face Off 2 in here, but I know for a fact that they're making a Face Off 2. I don't know how, <laughs> but, you know. Oh, dude, another terrible one. Bangkok, dangerous, just terrible. Didn't the fucking character that he played in Face Off canonically die? <laughs> like, he's dead, right? Caster Troy got killed in that movie, didn't he? Uh, I think so. Dude, the best scene... Okay. I think that that movie might actually contain my favorite scene in, in movie history, Scotty. Face which one off. is that? Face off. No, no, no. Which scene is that? If you thought about it, you would definitely figure it out. You definitely figure it out, dude. You would definitely, if you really thought about it, you could probably know. I'll give you one guess. Is it the, um, uh, what is it? Um, the gun scene? The gun scene, like, like, um, he has like, like he has like the dual guns. You know what I'm talking about? Like when they're shooting at each other and shit. No, no, okay. Scotty, hold on. I'll, I'm gonna I'm pull my favorite scene because I think I can get away with it. It's like I'm looking to you, like we both know our guns. You're talking about that one? No, no, you're wrong. Okay. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't. Well, I haven't seen. Fa- I've only seen Face Off once. That was when it came out. What? You got to see Face Off again. You're so stupid. Anyway, um, that's not it, Scotty. That's not it. All right. So, yeah, that, that explains why you didn't know. But it's this scene, Scotty. It even says greatest Nicolas Cage scene of all time in the fucking description of this well, fucking Let's see film. it. Because I can't. I, 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 it's like, yes. I don't want to play too much. So he's the preacher guy. He's here fucking the choir shit, blah, blah, blah. I do he's, the, he's the villain in this movie, though. Okay, yeah, he is the villain. But your voice makes even a hack like him seem like a genius. <laughs> I don't know what that 
part is that someone's added that, but <laughs> just that fucking face, man. He grabs her ass and he's like, ah! <laughs> that's, <laughs> of, that's exactly how it, yeah. What a fan of beauty, dude. Yep. Perfection. <laughs> C'est magnifique right there. That's Never been a better scene in film history, just so you know. Just so you know. 